Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Charlie and I am a UX designer. So how do you guys like the room? As you can tell, I am a huge, huge fan of One Piece. My fiance and I are actually re-watching the entire series and we are already on Water 7, so it's just really going through it. But anyways, today's video is not about this room and it's not a room tour. Today we are going to be talking about freelancing opportunities that you can get as a UX designer. I want to specifically talk about all the different ways that I've tried freelancing and what worked for me and what didn't. So the first one that I want to start off with is Fiverr. Now Fiverr actually really, really works for me. I'm the kind of freelancer where I like having the security of a full-time job and I do freelancing as a thing to kind of get more experience, earn a little bit more income and just work on a bit more interesting projects than I get to do at my regular job. Like there are definitely some months where I have like four or five projects going on and then I have like an entire month where there's nothing going on but it works really well for me. So on Fiverr, you pretty much just put up things called gigs. These are the services that you're willing to provide for people. And then you set up three different packages and these three different packages will go from like the cheapest to the most expensive and also the most amount of work or it'll take the longest to deliver. So on Fiverr, after you put those things up onto your account, that's when other people who are looking for those services can come to you and ask you to complete some kind of project for them. This works really great for me because like I said before, I am just someone who does freelancing on the side. I'm not trying to make this into like a full-time steady kind of income and having people reach out to me and having Fiverr kind of push my service to their different um, user bases is a lot easier for me than it is to go and try to find people to sell my service to. And because Fiverr does a lot of that heavy lifting, they do take quite a bit of the cut when you do get a job. But for me, it's totally worth it to not have to stress about finding people to, to sell to. So I really like Fiverr for that reason and it has really worked for me. When I first started, I didn't have any like clout or I didn't have any reviews on Fiverr. So I had my prices set very, very low. And then as I keep getting these like five star reviews or whatever, then I have gradually increased my price with every single one of those reviews. So now I'm sitting in a place that I am much more comfortable working for. But at the beginning, I definitely did not charge as much as I would have if I was just doing this like by myself. And if you are like me, where you are thinking of only doing freelancing as kind of like a side gig, I do have like very strict rules that I have for myself on Fiverr. So for one, I never do anything that I would have to do for work. So I would never do any like UX research. I wouldn't do any UI designs. One, because like I said, I do it for work and I know that if I do it for work and in my free time when I'm freelancing, I know I'm just going to get super, super burnt out very quickly. So I don't do that. And the second reason is because I can't compete with the prices that some people have on Fiverr. Like some people charge very, very low for their UI designs or like the research they do and everything. And I can't bring myself to work for that same kind of price point. So I just don't try at all completely. And I guess the last thing is just like, I never take on the projects that I know I have to do for work, meaning I am going to get in trouble with my job if I work for a competitor. So I always say no to those projects. And then another thing I keep in mind is that I just don't do any projects that are long term. I've definitely had people reach out to me through Fiverr to try to get me to sign onto like three to four month contracts. And for me, like, I, I just don't want to do that. That's not what I'm there for for Fiverr. I'm looking for very short, like maybe one to two week engagements with different projects. So very small amounts of work that I can make sure that I can complete on time. Like I don't know whether or not I'm going to enter a crunch time during my full time job. And I don't want to be very stressed out trying to complete like a project for Fiverr as well as working through a crunch time at my regular job because I don't think that's very good for me. So anything longer than like two weeks is something on Fiverr that I will absolutely pass. I will say like the one kind of not so good thing about Fiverr is just the weird messages you get sometimes. Like definitely people are trying to come at you for scams or like some people honestly have the audacity to try to get me to do their take home assignment that they get from an interview. Like, I don't get it. Like, how do you have the audacity to even ask that kind of thing? Yeah, just watch out if you decide to go on Fiverr, just watch out for like these really weird kind of people trying to message you. But yeah, Fiverr really works for me. I really enjoy doing it. And I think if you are like a junior designer or if you're someone who's looking to get a little bit more experience, Fiverr is a really good opportunity for you to try to get a few more of these paid experiences that you can 
that you can just put onto your resume or your portfolio. But yeah, Fiverr works really great for me and that's why I wanted to start off talking about it. And especially because of the messages that you get on Fiverr, I think it's great for a junior designer to be on Fiverr because you just get that chance to learn how to say no to people or have more opportunities to negotiate with people. I can honestly talk about Fiverr for a very long time, but I think I need to move on to other topics in this video. So we are gonna do that. Next, I wanna talk about something that doesn't work for me and that is Upwork. So Upwork is an online freelancing platform as well, but Upwork is kind of like the opposite of Fiverr where people put up jobs that they want done and then you have to bid on them against other freelancers. And for me, like that doesn't work. I'm pretty sure Upwork just deactivated my account because I just did nothing with it. I just don't have the time and I don't really care to look for opportunities on my own. So like it just doesn't work for me. But if you want to do that and if you want like a bit more steady. If you're a bit more of a freelancer who takes the initiative to find these side projects, then yeah, you you might work really well with Upwork. I did not, so I don't really have a lot to say about it. Hi, sorry. Okay, so it's editing me and I realized one more thing that I don't like about Upwork and it's just been so long since I've actually taken a look at the website that I totally forgot about this. But the main reason that I don't like Upwork is because they ask you to charge an hourly rate for your work. And I, I really don't like charging hourly. I think it's just not a good business model. And there's like this whole talk that Christo did on his channel about why you shouldn't charge hourly and I will link it in the description and I will put a card up in my video somewhere but that was a really big factor on why I didn't want to use Upwork as well. Okay, <laughs> proceed. Next up, what I want to talk about is the cold call. So cold call, I would say this worked for me the one time that I actually did a cold call. I have a 100% success rate when it comes to cold call, but my first case study and my first freelancing job actually came from a cold call. I created a case study for a bakery and then I sent it over to them, like all of my work and like, I pretty much emailed them and said, I really like your pastries. I really like the things that you do and you inspired me to create a website. It just so happens that they were also looking to redesign their website. So that's kind of how I got my first case study and I got my first freelancing opportunity. That was really lucky. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen every single time. So yeah, like it works for me, but I can't say that I would recommend it for you. It's just very risky for you to do all of that work pre-engagement and send it off to someone. I just ended up with very, very good clients and very good people who like my work enough to actually want to hire me. And we spent like a good four months working on that case study or website design. So that really worked for me, but I really can't say that I would recommend doing all of that work beforehand because who knows, like I'm sure there's plenty of people who would just see it, like it, and then take your work and not give you any credit and not pay you. So I can't really say that I would recommend it, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's also a personality thing. I'm not very comfortable just going up to people and talking to them and like trying to pitch at them. So I would not do a cold call. That's not really my style, but for you, if you want to try that, then you should to go ahead, I, I won't stop you. So the next thing that I found has been very helpful for me getting freelance opportunities is speaking at conferences and events. So this is actually one of my favorite ones because it makes me feel like I'm social without actually really being social. So for me, like I definitely find conferences and events easier to attend if I am a speaker instead of just being an attendee. And I think the reason is because if you attend as a speaker, then you already have like a presentation that you've practiced and that you're ready to give in which you sound like an expert in. And if people hear that from you, then you're kind of already talking to them because you're presenting to them, then you're you're kind of already building connections and then usually after like people will come up to you and talk to you about your topic or they'll ask you like some questions and things like that. So it kind of opens that door for people to like kind of come up to you a little bit easier than if you were just like both attendees and trying to mingle like that. So this really works for me because I think like a lot of people when they meet me through these conferences and events with the way that I present and the way that I speak, like I'm talking about something that I'm very comfortable with. Like I'm very comfortable talking about design and I've probably already given this talk or at least rehearsed it for like a good week or two. So people automatically think that I'm actually very outgoing and very social, which is not true at all, but it kind of seems that way because I was able to present something that I know a lot about. And it kind of cuts away all of that small talk because they usually come to you with like questions and things like that. So it's just like 
way easier for me to network through being a speaker, if that makes sense. Like it just kind of helps you break the ice. So through speaking at conferences and events, I've definitely had people come up to me afterwards and then say like, oh, we have a project that we need a designer on. Like, would you be interested? And then I can start connecting with them that way. And I've also gotten freelancing opportunities through through those means. And like actually just like kind of as a side note when it comes to networking, I've always found that if you go to networking, like you should never bring a friend and I'm saying this as a very introverted person, but like whenever I go to a networking event and I have a friend with me, I never end up meeting anyone. Like I would never come out of my shell because I have someone that I'm like very comfortable with and I kind of use them as like an anchor or like a safety net so that I don't have to socialize with new people. And because like we're already two people that know each other and then we're talking in a pretty like casual and engaged way, it makes it also harder for other people to come up to us. So usually whenever I go to like events like networking or like whatever, I try to go by myself and I try not to know anyone. And that kind of forces me to have to meet someone else and talk to someone else and then inject myself into conversations. It's definitely not easy and I'm super exhausted by the time I come home. But if you're out at a networking event anyway, then like you kind of just owe it to yourself to like try you know? Yeah, that's just kind of like my side note when it comes to events and stuff. Oh, and like another networking thing that's really worked for me is like networking within your company. So like sometimes when I'm working with a project team and you know, you kind of see how each other work and everything. One of my co-workers will actually be like, oh, my friend needs a website designed or needs something like that. And they would recommend me. So yeah, I actually think like this is the one that I this one and Fiverr are the two where I get the most freelancing opportunities from. And honestly, it's just like such a wonderful feeling to know that your coworkers think that you do a good enough job that they would recommend you to like other people they know in their network. Yeah, like all in all, those have really worked for me. But yeah, I think this is one of the best ways that you can get freelancing opportunities. Just work well with your coworkers, be good at your job and it'll be good for your full-time job as well. So, and then the next thing that I wanna kind of finish off with that didn't work for me or or isn't working for me now is social media. So things like Dribbble or Instagram, like stuff like that, where people have actually DM'd me about working on projects, it doesn't work for me. Like I've never had a solid opportunity to actually go through. It either ends up with them like ghosting me or the price point is just so ridiculously low that I can't justify myself spending that time that it would take to finish up the project in a good quality way that I would be proud of to call my work and like, like it just doesn't work. It's, it's just not enough for me at that point. So social media is definitely something that I feel like there are a lot of opportunities on, but I just haven't had like the right one come up for me. And in this case, I'm only talking about like UX project work, not like sponsorships and things like that, but like actual UX freelancing jobs. And that brings us to the very end of the video. Um, I think that was like six ways of freelancing, three that worked for me and like three that didn't. I can't remember. I'll, I'll editing Charlie can handle that. But I think the ways that work for me and the ways that didn't work for me, a lot of it is also dependent on where I am, what I'm looking for for freelancing and also like my personality. So if you are exactly like me, maybe you'll have kind of the same results. But if you're not, maybe you're a little bit more extroverted. Maybe you are someone who takes more initiative when it comes to finding freelancing jobs, then I don't know, your, your mileage may vary. But I will say that I think in general, freelancing is really good to do if you have the energy to do it. It's a great way for you to kind of like test new apps, have a fresh eye to look at things, and also like just get a bit more experience. I've been able to work on a lot of projects that I wouldn't have at my current company or at my, all of my previous companies because we're not in that same kind of demographic. Like I used to be a designer for like corporate and stuff and then now I'm working more in the healthcare field. So for freelancing, I take on a lot of like AR opportunities, VR opportunities, um, crypto, blah, like stuff, like stuff like that, that I would never really be able to touch working at my jobs. So that's really cool. And it really helped me open up to like, oh, maybe I need to think of something this way or things like that. I don't know. It just helps you become more of a well-rounded designer. And who knows, like maybe, one of these freelancing projects is going to inspire you so much that you realize you want to get into a particular niche or something. I think that would be great too. But yeah, um, let me know if you have any 
experiences being a freelancer, I would absolutely love to hear them. If you guys have any more questions regarding freelancing, I would love to answer them as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, 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 always for just watching my channel, enjoying my videos, keeping up with your design work, and supporting me. I, I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!